First at 5, from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. The data is finally in after a federal judge extended the Florida voter registration deadline. And Florida universities are looking to increase the amount of online courses required by undergraduate students. We're now past Florida's extended voter registration deadline and election offices face extra work on another front as well. It's Wednesday, October 19th. I'm Stephanie Byrne. And I'm Maggie Lorenz. Thanks for joining us. Recent court rulings mean extra work processing those registrations and extra work when it comes to making sure absentee ballots are legitimate. Emma Moon joins us now with the details. Yes, on this day when everyone's looking forward to the last debate, I spoke to some insiders about these procedural rulings. It turns out quite a few people took advantage of the extension on getting registered, but in Marion County that didn't reveal anything to favor one side or the other. After Hurricane Matthew, Florida voter registration was extended a week and statewide 60,000 people took advantage. We had an increase of about 1,300 registered voters here in Marion County. The Marion County Supervisor of Elections says what surprised him was the party breakdown seemed normal, despite one party forcing the issue in court. So it is shocking. Uh, I really kind of expected, you know, one particular demographic to kind of peek out a little bit, but it didn't. It didn't. Many people just put it off. I think I just didn't realize how easy it would be, and I didn't want to take time out of my day every time I walked by all the people trying to get me to register, and so when it was the last minute, I knew I wanted to do it anyway, so I walked over and it took like three minutes. Yesterday was the last day to turn in your voter registration forms. The forms that were postmarked by October 18th will still be accepted in the next few days. Now you can start turning in your absentee ballots to boxes like this outside of the Supervisor of Elections office. With some talk of influencing officials or hacking of systems, I asked if this would be possible across the 67 county supervisors. Getting us 67 to agree on anything is impossible. We couldn't agree on what we're going to have for lunch, much less agree on collusion and you know, getting somebody elected or not elected. Looking forward, Florida is still a must-win swing state for both candidates. Um, so you've seen um, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton and their surrogates all over Florida uh, in the last few weeks campaigning. Um, so, uh, so that's what brings them here um, and, um, and, so, and, and I think as uh, Latino turnout in Florida especially um, is going to be important. Over the coming days, those 67 election offices will be sorting through the last of the registration forms, closing the books on who can vote in Florida for this election. I asked those same experts about another court ruling, this one on absentee ballot signatures. There's a formal process for matching signatures, but a federal judge is worried some may be set aside as a Mitch match just because someone was rushing or their handwriting is not what it used to be. The judge has ordered those people be notified to get a chance to come in and fix the problem and have their vote still count. And so, um, and so I think that's an important um, um, order, judicial order, that the federal judge has given to make sure that people's votes have counted because those people obviously wanted to vote. They wanted to cast valid vote not only for president but for other offices as well. Um, and so it's an important um, guarantee that they'll have the opportunity to have their vote counted. This also makes sure that people don't think their ballot might just be thrown away. Myth out there is that some election group is out there, or some elections office is just rejecting ballots, just throwing them away, just you know throwing. That that's not that doesn't happen. The elections office, our me and my office do not have that authority. According to Wilcox, out of 14,000 absentee ballots already received, only 21 Marion County voters have had issues with their signatures. His office has sent notices to all affected voters. Last but not least today, it's time for the last debate of the presidential race. Diane Gallagher has this preview of what America might expect tonight in Vegas. The finishing touches for the third and final presidential debate are in place here at the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. From the Commission on Presidential Debates... This is a challenge. It is the one of three times that the leading contenders for the office of president will be in one place. It's the last of uh, the debates. To student volunteers... Hi, good afternoon. Everyone is ready for the last public showdown between Republican Donald Trump and Democrat Hillary Clinton. 
Fox News anchor Chris Wallace will be moderating the debate, which will be divided into six 15-minute segments. The topics are immigration, entitlements and debt, the Supreme Court, the economy, foreign policy, and each candidate's fitness to serve as president. Now, Clinton and Trump will have two minutes apiece for their answers, and they'll also get to respond to each other. Wallace can use any leftover time to dig deeper into individual responses. The stakes are high for both candidates, Clinton making no public appearances Tuesday, opting instead to focus on debate prep. Now Trump held rallies in Colorado Springs and Grand Junction, Colorado. In Las Vegas, Nevada, I'm Diane Gallagher. Like the previous two, the third presidential debate will be carried live on a variety of TV networks, cable news channels, radio stations, and streaming websites. Nielsen says 84 million Americans watched the first debate at home on TV, and 67 million watched the second one. NewsHour hosted coverage starts at 9 o'clock here on WUFT-TV. And if you're out and about, NPR coverage can be heard on the radio on WUFT-FM 89.1. Evan, thank you. Well, Steph, I feel like it's been more than usual for October. Have you noticed that too? You know, I've been saying it all week. I got my hopes up earlier this month that we were going to have some cooler temps with fall, but we turned things back over to WUFT's Amanda Hawley, who joins us in the Weather Center. Amanda, how long can we expect these warm temperatures to last? Well, we've got a couple more days of these above average temperatures continuing. Unfortunately, those highs will still be in the mid 80s for the next couple of days. But there is some good news on the way. I'll get to that in just a minute. But for today, it was another warm one out there. That temperature right now, 83 degrees on the University of Florida campus. But notice those clear skies. We still have high pressure overhead for now. It is weakening as uh, we get closer towards the end of the weekend. But uh, you'll see a little bit more cloud cover on your Thursday. But check out your current temperatures across North Florida right now 84 in Lake City, 84 in Ocala, 81 out in St. Augustine tonight. Those temperatures will be cool and comfortable once again falling into the low 60s by the time Thursday morning rolls around. There won't be as much patchy fog out there, but it'll still be pretty cool and comfortable. Coming up, I will tell you when we could see the cooler temperatures arrive. Back to you. Thank you, Amanda. Florida universities are looking to grow their online course offerings, but that won't necessarily save students any money. WFT's Kayla James reports. Techniques say online can help some students learn. Learning, it also privileges learners who like to take their time and think and compose responses and need more time to think about that and maybe um, quieter learners who can't always get their voice in. So I think it's helpful to have a mix. One issue is cost. The governor has been pressing for online courses to be cheaper than their traditional counterparts. A new report on six state schools found the cost is running higher because of distance education fees, which are sometimes added to lower the tuition. In what is believed to be the first federally funded project for scientific research in Cuba, a UF IFAS team will gather data on wood boring beetles. The pests destroy trees globally, including pine trees, which are known to provide paper, resin, and other valuable products. The beetle is even destroying some avocado trees in South Florida. The research grant for UF totals more than $200,000 and is from the U.S. Department of Agriculture. And there are more signs the state has not been able to stamp out the local transmission of Zika in Miami Beach. Two new cases there today have raised the state count to 165 cases spread by locally, uh, locally by mosquito bites. To spread the virus, a mosquito has to find an infected person to bite and then manage to not get killed before biting a healthy person. Because mosquitoes don't live all that long and people get over Zika after a few weeks, it's been rare to find infected mosquitoes and traps set out to monitor the population. But the state just found an eighth mosquito caught in the wild that tested positive, and like the others, it was caught in Miami Beach. WUFT News First at 5 is just getting started. Coming up, I'll tell you about how you could be, could be getting some of your money back at the airport. New policies from the White House could make your life a little easier when you fly. Plus, scammers are increasingly able to get people's financial information over the phone. I'll tell you who they're targeting right here in the Sunshine State. Consumer News is up next. And we've been above average for the past couple of days, but I've got some really good news for the weekend. Coming up, I'll tell you just how low temperatures could get both Saturday and Sunday morning.